In today's video, we're opening an unknown Yu-Gi-Oh! collection. What's up guys, we're back with another collection purchase, and yes, we have a giant binder. You guys know how binders go. We're gonna figure out how to do this, but we will record somehow. But I don't really know what's in here. I know it's a pretty nice collection. I know it's like kind of the value of it or, or ish what I'm gonna end up paying, but I gotta check out the cards first. Some of the cards are falling out, so hopefully nothing got like damaged or anything. So we're gonna be checking out for that. Uh, but first, we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away this Legendary Duelist Rage of Raw booster box, Go Sure God card. Maybe, could be in there. Just like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications, let me know down below what you think we should pay for this Yu-Gi-Oh collection and uh, what your favorite card is. All right, guys, I was gonna show you guys in the binder, but the cards were falling everywhere. The binder didn't wanna stay open. It was just just a nightmare to record so i pulled out the cards this is a very high quality over quantity kind of collection which you guys know i like not a lot of cards here but they're all pretty nice so first off we have three right of aramis here these appeared are these the collector rare are they the ultra look like the ultra rare let me see these are like double and triple sleeve oh these got these weird these weird sleeves where like you can like tuck the sleeve in there. I've never really liked these. It's hard to get them like tied onto the card, which is usually what you want. Let's see. These appear to be the ultra rares from what I can tell. They're a little warped like the other way. Okay, a little warped on these, but let's see. Uh, looks pretty nice. Yeah, definitely the ultra rare of these, not collector rare or anything, but still really nice. These are still decently valuable, even though like the Brave Engine or whatever you want to call it is not as good anymore, but it's still pretty solid. So we've got three of those. Let's go to the next thing. Let's see. We have a Faithful Adventure. So this is going with that same engine. This is the collector rare. Let's see. I'm assuming that these newer cards are probably pretty nice, but they've probably been played, you know, for the actual TCG because they were pretty good for quite a while. So they maybe had some weird from that let's see we have the fateful adventure i remember pulling one of these early on i think i still have it actually somewhere on my uh you know my meta binder or whatever so we have a collector rare that's looking pretty clean on the front a little bit warped you know sometimes that's just how it goes with some newer Yu-Gi-Oh cards they just get warped pretty easily then we've got of course water enchanters of the temple but these are the ultimate rare which is interesting because i feel like the collector rare the ones people actually want because it matches the set but these are just the uh, ultimate rare which are still really nice looking i think they look pretty good two of those so pretty cool we're not going to check those out i don't think they're actually that valuable surprisingly then we have more meta stuff don't worry most of this is not actually meta stuff we have access code talker secret rare some battles of legend crystal revenge so probably a 25 dollar card something like that one of the cheaper cards in the collection but still a pretty solid card definitely very good in the game and then pretty decent in value then we've got a collector rare lightning storm i had one of these up for sale in my tcg player for a long time i just sold it the other day so ironically we're gonna get another one right after that happens which is pretty funny so honestly if i hadn't sold the other one i'd be thinking about trying to make a set but collector rare lightning storm looking pretty nice more meta relevant stuff very beautiful i mean wow check that out is this like euro print or something this is looking really good i don't remember king's court looking this nice lightning storm collector rare. crazy that king's court is like two years old almost at this point so that card's almost a two-year-old card i would have said it was like a month old <laughs> you know just based on feeling all right then we have a yap summon skull so this is a really cool card it's definitely oc uh this is not a crazy value card but all of these yap cards do pretty well in terms of value because they have amazingly awesome artwork like it's unique it's a you know only on these specific cards it looks really good like it feels like all the alternate arts are really really nice and super quality and this is no exception it looks really really awesome i love it it's the uh the pink summon skull next up we have a power bond ultimate rare which does not appear to be perfect condition based on that corner right there but ultimate rare maybe even uh i don't actually know i would say euro but i think crv unlimited is weird like when you get into like those unlimited prints it's like did they even have euro or were they only euro it's just very confusing uh you need to get in a gx expert who knows that kind of stuff but i feel like the gx sets only had euro unlimiteds but i could be wrong about that so all the euros look really really good check that out you can really follow the light going there power bond ultimate rare so I really i see that corner in that corner front other than that looks pretty decent okay back's a little bit beat up you can see some of that going through but then you got some scratches and stuff so we're looking to like mod play on this one but still really nice looking card i mean the euro ulti is just another level for ultimate rares and like gx and stuff and speaking of we have a proto cyber dragon let's just take a look at this i mean since we have this nice cardboard let's take this time today to appreciate the nice cardboard so we're gonna get the reflections and the light if we can for some of these cards so proto cyber not a huge card like i mean obviously the it's kind of like the the step brother of the cyber dragons it's no big deal i mean just look at that that looks like the card is scratched that's how like indented the uh the foil is it looks amazing very beautiful proto cyber dragon i mean this is not perfect condition either by any means yeah the back's pretty scuffed up so yeah we've got 
maybe mod play on this proto cyber dragon but even then looks really really awesome and then we are back to the yap one red eyes b dragon beautiful looking card Ooh, don't drop that uh yeah these are i mean just the artworks on these are so good they're like so much different than a normal Yu-Gi-Oh card like they have like their own feel to them their own like vibe they're really really cool i love them and then the ultra rare like hits pretty well on these as well so they don't have to be super high rarity to be awesome so that and the summon skull are really nice in this collection then we have he's fallen from grace the destiny hero dasher you guys remember when this guy was crazy money he was 20 bucks for a rare and then of course the ultis were absolutely nuts because of course the dpe was running rampant and this was the card you used in your deck because it could be somewhat relevant when you send it to the graveyard let's see it looks wow that is a poor condition card check that out this looks so dark it almost looks fake like it's not fake but it has a very orange look to it wow this is in like i mean i mean we're like damaged heavily play would be that'd be generous i'd say because when you got something like that in there and then you got that and then you got all this on the back i mean honestly yeah that's pretty bad that's that's beat up but Yep, not like it's that valuable anyway anymore because DPE is basically out of the meta unless you're like playing heroes, which are not good anyway. Sorry, MBT. Then we have the Crush card, Virus. So unfortunately, this is not the SJC copy. If it was, we would probably be going bankrupt trying to buy this collection. But the Ultimate Rare from Legendary Collection, I, I hate these sleeves so much. They're so weird. I do not like them because the one they make your cards like this thick for every card and then they're just very hard to open up. Uh, which I guess is kind of the point, but Crush Guard Virus Ultimate Rare from Duelist Pack Kaiba. It is not a first ad, it's an unlimited, so probably I'd guess like 20 to 25 bucks, something like that, maybe even less. A little bit of light scuffing on the back. If I was to sell this on TCG myself, it'd be an LP from what I can tell. In reality, it's more like a VLP, but when you sell on TCG player, you can't sell a VLP as near mint. You have to go down to light play. So sometimes you lose money doing that, unfortunately, but that's just how it goes. Then we have the Nightmare Phoenix Collector Rare. Uh, this is very cool. I really like the Nightmare cards. They're really nice link cards because we've been playing a ton of Master Duel and you know, I'm, I'm appreciating these link cards a lot because I've been using them. So stuff like this is really nice. Make sure to check out the Twitch stream, uh, twitch.tv slash Ruxin34. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if you guys want to see me playing Master Duel, doing other stuff, stuff like that, go check it out. These are really beautiful. I'm telling you. Jim and I, our Genesis Impact, I should say, uh, around that time, they had made really nice looking collector rares, but the set sucked. So it was like the collector rares you could get out of there looked amazing. So if there was a decent card like Nightmare Phoenix, then it looks incredible. But the rest of the set was kind of a dud. All right dark magician very nice and this is one that i always think is a yap card because it has a similar artwork but it was actually just a jump promo around the same time as like 2008 so they're not really the same but they kind of are like i mean it felt like they kind of these were under the same like project same artwork stuff like that i really like this white background by the way i think it looks like really unique and cool this is one of the best looking dark magicians out there in my opinion if you disagree or agree i want to know in the comments what do you think about this dark magician's artwork and of course more yap buster blader this might be the best looking one to be honest he's got a little bit of lightning going on in the background he's like on a mountain he's about to whip out his sword dude this just looks really cool like you gotta appreciate the artwork sometimes sometimes when you're going through Yu-Gi-Oh cards the best thing you can do is just look at it in the light sometimes when i have all my lights off and like my desk lamp on the cards look the best i don't know try that out at your house or wherever you're living you know if you got a desk lamp turn all your lights out turn that on and you get some really nice foil pops so that's a good one that artwork is amazing and here we have another duelist pack kaiba card we have chaos emperor dragon envoy of the end ultimate rare we have pulled many of these on the channel i pulled first edition i pulled unlimited we have a psa 10 first edition as well which is pretty pretty amazing so yeah as you guys know this is one of the first cards that got me back into Yu-Gi-Oh. i pulled it in my very first box of the kaiba collection with duels pack kaiba unlimited pulled this thing out and i was like dang this thing looks different for some reason i don't know how i didn't know about ultimate rares because i liked Yu-Gi-Oh for like four years when it first came out but I guess they didn't have until 2004, but I still didn't know about it. Then we have the Cyber Darks. We have Cyber Dark Heal. We also have a Cyber Dark Horn here. So these are kind of like the, the little brothers of the Cyber Darks that become the big stuff, but they're pretty cool. It's kind of like Gate Guardian pieces for Cyber Dark. Very nice. We're not going to pull those out. They are pretty cool, though. Next, though, we do have one that I've been looking for for quite a while. I've been trying to pull this guy out of pow uh, Power of the Duelist for quite a while. Chimera Tech Over Dragon. 
And here it is. Let's see if it's in good condition. I hope it is because that would be pretty amazing. So I have pulled this one time and it was when I was pulling for how on whatnot I pulled him one from a Power of the Duelist first edition pack. It was pretty amazing. I think it ended up getting a nine, but it was still a really nice card. Okay, this one looks... Oh man, we got some damage on the bottom. That's a real shame. Yeah, that is a that's a crying shame. We got some stuff on the back. Yeah. With that, a, that's pretty significant damage to like the condition, unfortunately. Because it is like a it's like a bend, you know, and it goes all the way across them. Other than that, it would be pretty clean, other than that right there. Unfortunate. It still looks really beautiful though. This is a really nice like sleeve card. You put it in a sleeve, put it in your binder, and nobody can ever tell because it's on the back. And then that part is pretty unnoticeable in a sleeve. Unfortunate, but still a nice card. All right, and next we have the one, the only Cyberdark Dragon, which is a pretty amazing card. We've had a few of these over the years, but I've always had my one that I pulled, and it was a nine at one point, became a ten. So I've always really enjoyed this card. I think it's pretty beautiful. A Cyberdark Dragon. I can already see some edgeware on this one, though. We got some edgeware up top. Ooh, and a bend, unfortunately. Got a little ding right there. Pretty bad corner there. So yeah, we're not looking at like minty, minty cards. Oh yeah, that's that's not great. We're not looking at minty cards for the most part today, but even when they're not minty, you can really appreciate this awesome cardboard. It doesn't have to be PSA 10 condition to be an amazing Yu-Gi-Oh card. Then we have some cool spell cards like Overload Fusion Ulti. We have Machine Dupe Ulti. We have, okay, three of those, by the way. We have a play set of Machine Dupe Ulti's, which are really, really cool. You might be able to guess what's coming up next if you see these four spell cards. Pretty awesome ultis. We're not going to check the condition on them because we have some bigger cards coming up. The next one is a big one, Cyber Dragon Ultimate Rare. So this is a very cool card. It's an ultimate rare. It's a Cyber Dragon. It's pretty amazing. Let's see. Let's get rid of this weird sleeve. So far, I see a little bit of corner edging. Kind of a lot of corner edging, actually. Let's see if there's any more that I can't see. Okay, that corner looks weird. It's like cut kind of straight. That's got a little edge wear right there. We got some corner ding right there. We've got this one I thought I saw. Oh, yeah, some whitening there actually pretty clean back i feel like this is pretty normal for like cyber dragons from crv to have like edge wear and corner issues but then like the surfaces be, be like i mean they're pretty clean overall like if this was the back and everything else was good i'd call it near mint but obviously these uh, are going to make a difference but honestly i don't know i've seen multiple cyber dragons with this same condition it's kind of weird pretty nice actually not a terrible condition maybe like lp i'd have to double check some of those corners then we have the one the only cyber twin dragon which is pretty cool we're not going to check that one because as you guys know cyber dragon cyber Twin Dragon. What comes next? The Cyber and Dragon. That's the end. So, oh my goodness, you can already see whitening up there. Hopefully, it's the same as the Cyber Dragon, where it's just a little whitening on the edges, and that's it. That'd be pretty amazing. I'd be down for that. Uh, Cyber and Dragon is a very expensive card, no matter what the condition. So, hopefully, it's pretty decent. Let's see. We have a. Oh, it is not decent at all. We have a damage right there. Big damage. We got more damage right there. Oh yeah, this is rough. We got an edge wear. Wow, yeah, that thing is straight up bent, unfortunately. So it looks like uh, he completed his collection with the uh, more the damage one, probably to keep it more affordable, which is reasonable. But even then, I mean, in the sleeve, you couldn't really tell. So that's what's cool about some damage cards. You can buy damage, like if you're trying to ball on a budget, you know, you buy a damage card, you put it in a sleeve, and it's like, if it looks like this, you're like, wow, what a beautiful card. You don't even notice all the damage. So pretty nice. We got a few more cards left. I told you guys this was quality over quantity. Uh, Galaxy has Photon Dragon. I might actually need this for my binder. So I, that's why we're going to check this one, not because it's probably very valuable and ultimate rare, but I don't know if I have this. I know I have the Ghost I don't know if I have the first dead ulti or not for my binder. We have Galaxy Eyes Photon, front looks clean back looks clean okay yeah, yeah that's a candidate if we have the need for it that will be going in the binder if i don't need it okay maybe a little bit of edgeware at the top camera no maybe not it's just the new borders that kind of look like there's edgeware but it's really because they're so shiny all right then we have three starlight rares two therion king regulus and one alpha the master beast these are pretty cool cards they're worth i think they're in like the mid-range of starlights maybe like 150 to 200 something like that and then one more card guys this is a cool one bring might bring back some memories of the channel a blue eyes shining dragon from retro pack too so uh yeah i haven't actually owned one of these other than the one i pulled ever i don't think because these just do not come around very often they are pretty rare blue eyes shining dragon i mean even though they are mass print and stuff you would think they're a little bit easier to come by but you don't really see them that often or at least people aren't selling them when they have them so front looks pretty clean on that not gonna lie wow the back looks clean too we got a couple of scratches but other than that this is really nice i wasn't expecting this with how the other cards went but 
This card's very clean. I think it would maybe even get like an eight or a nine if we graded it from what I can tell. A little bit of foil bleed I just saw up there too. Wow, that is a beautiful looking... Oh, wow, that's such a cool card, man. One of the coolest cards ever made. Too bad it's absolutely awful. Maybe I'll make one a, a deck in Master Duel. I've been doing that with Petite Moth, so maybe the next one's Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. If you guys enjoyed this in-depth collection purchase, you liked seeing all this awesome cardboard, let me know if you want to see more like this where we go through the conditions a little bit more often and spend a little bit more time there. Or if you like it where I just fire through the cards and we look at all the different ones. Uh, this was more of a quality over quantity purchase so that's kind of why we did that make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this shout out to tone Fo show daxter jt cho puffins of doom ernesto deanda dizzy hoppus choice 333 mccycle james jance tcg trust of cards america deutzer supreme sage 21 and then the tie show ian musa junior barding mimic gecko and thomas mcclain thank you guys for supporting the channel i'll see you guys in the next one peace